If you need to build Marlin for a 32-bit board, it's a little bit different from the 8-bit boards that we're used to dealing with. We're going to use Atom with Platform IO so you can compile for your 32-bit board running Marlin 2.0. So stay tuned, we're going to go through it step by step, so you can start compiling for Marlin 2 for your 32-bit boards. Stay tuned. The first thing we're going to want to do is head to atom.io and download the latest version. So I'm going to go ahead and let this download, and then I'm going to run the file. When you run the file, it's not going to give you any installation options. It's just going to install and then open like you see here. We're going to go ahead and click install a package and then open installer. I'm going to type platform io-ide and make sure you're selecting platform io-ide and click install. This may take a little while depending on your computer and internet speed but just be patient. Once it downloads all the files, you're gonna see a platform IO IDE installing, and you're just gonna to wanna to wait until it's done doing its thing. Now that platform IO is installed, you'll see this little message here in the upper right hand corner, it says it's been successfully installed. Please restart Atom to apply the changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit restart. Now that platform IO is installed, you'll notice that there's a toolbar at the top. This is showing that platform IO is installed because now we have all these different options. Now before we move forward, we're going to install one more package. So we're going to go back to install a package, open installer, and we're going to type process-palette. You're going to want to install this package here, process-palette, and go ahead and hit install. Again, this will take a second depending on your computer and internet speed, but just let it do its thing. So now that we have this installed, we can go ahead and close out of Atom and reopen it. At this point, we're ready to actually compile firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open project and then click open project again. And it's going to give you a browse. I already have the latest TS3D Unified U2R1 firmware extracted to this folder here. So I'm going to copy this just to make it easier. And I'm going to go back to Atom and paste this in and hit enter. Now you do not want to click on anything in here, you just want to hit select folder. This is the same process if you're using Marlin, I'm just using our firmware because that's what I use. If this was Marlin, you would just browse to your Marlin firmware folder and then hit select folder. Now that we've hit select folder, we have a bunch of options on the left here under project. Now these little welcome things you can go ahead and close out, they're kind of annoying, and decide if you want to help them by setting anonymous usage data. So on the left hand side, you're going to want to click the little arrow next to Marlin and double click configuration.h. And we have our fresh config here. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up for my Ender 3. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the two forward slashes in front of pound define Ender 3. And you're going to see it's going to change colors. That means it's now active. You're going to want to then do a control S to save. You'll see there's a little blue icon here. So if I hit control S, it's going to go away. Now I'm going to go up to the top and hit auto build, PIO build, and you'll get a little command window that shows up and this is compiling the firmware. Now you can see there's little yellow warning messages coming up. You can safely ignore those. It's just informational. If it actually is a problem, it won't even compile. So right now it's compiling my firmware and depending on your computer, this may take a little while or not. This is on a fairly fast system, but we've now compiled our firmware. So if you see here, it says success, took 27.56 seconds, and we built for the TH3D Easy Board and used the LPC 1769 environment. Now, with these 32 bit boards, you're not actually going to flash over USB. So I'm gonna go back over to my folder here, and now you see we have a couple of new folders. We have PIO lib depths, these are dependencies that it downloaded when it compiled, and then we have PIO ENVS. If we go into here, and then our, here's our CPU folder. There's a firmware.bin file. This is the firmware file that you can put on your SD card. When you copy this file to your SD card and turn your printer on, it's going to automatically pull that firmware into the printer and flash it. After it flashes it, it's going to rename it. So every time you turn it on after that, it's not going to then reflash the firmware. So updating your firmware with these 32-bit boards is very easy because you just compile it on your computer 
copy the firmware file to your SD card, put the card in your printer, and turn it on. After that, you actually don't even need the SD card if you're not using SD printing. If you're just using Octoprint, you can take the SD card out and the firmware is on the machine then. You only need the SD card to actually update the firmware on the printer. And that's it. So hopefully this video was helpful to show you guys how to set up the Atom Text Editor with Platform I.O. so you can compile for Marlin 2.0 or for the TS3D Unified U2 R1 version, which is what our latest Easy Board is using. Now, I would be lying if I said that I didn't have to reshoot this video like four different times because I kept encountering random problems. I found that every time I had some sort of error come up in the Atom Text Editor, a simple closing of it and reopening of it fixed the issue. I didn't even have to restart the computer. So if you do find yourself getting random errors that can't really be explained, even though you followed the directions here, just close it out and reopen it and you should be fine. But other than that, once I got everything set up and reloaded the Atom IDE, it was pretty much smooth sailing. It's a little different from the Arduino IDE that everybody's used to with the 8-bit boards, but in my opinion, this is a welcome addition because it's a much nicer interface in terms of editing the text. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully this showed you how to set up your computer to flash the latest Marlin 2.0 version for your 32-bit board. As always, stay tuned for more awesome tech videos, and happy printing!